Good morning. Get ready for 90 minutes of tantalising recipes. This is Saturday Kitchen Live. Welcome to the show. With me in the studio today are two of our favourite chefs. Between them, they've clocked up over 60 appearances here on Saturday Kitchen. It's Vivek Singh and Theo Randall. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning man. Get you old timers. I know. <laughs> you, you look so young in those old days. Doesn't, doesn't show in the face, though. You'll be pleased to know. Uh, and Raring to Pour, a wine expert who's been with the show from the start. That's coming up to 15 years, Ollie Smith. I can't believe it's 15 years. It's gone by in a blink. It must be because I've been marinated in wine all that time. Yeah, you have. <laughs> um, <laughs> our special guest today uh, is here. She's singing the theme tune, I might add. Uh, she's an award-winning <laughs> presenter, journalist, and a Strictly Come Dancing champion. Her incredible documentaries are viewed by millions, and she's back with a brand new show focusing on DNA. Please welcome Stacey Dooley, MBE. Uh, <laughs> wow. Look at that. Yay. Didn't see that one coming. What a title, I know yeah. I'll take it. I just, I'm so excited to be here, I can't tell you. I'm not topping it up. I just have to sit here, <laughs> talk about work for a bit, and then have remarkable food brought to me. Isn't it nice? I mean. Remember that? It's like, it's like those restaurants we can't go to. Do you remember those things? Oh. I know, I got really excited when I saw this set up. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not have that home? Losing my mind. <laughs> now listen, uh, you are well, almost part of the furniture here. You've uh, been yes. on this three times. You know what's going on. We'll talk all about your uh, your my new guilty pleasure, DNA. Oh yes, you watched it. Oh, I love Did it. you like it? Yeah, you're gonna love please. It. Sobbing. It's very emotional. I thought it was only the repair shop that made me cry. No, DNA no. will do that to yeah. you. Yeah. It's brilliant. Anyway, we'll talk more about yeah. that later. Let's find out what's on the menu. Vivek, you're cooking first. What right. you got? Well, so I've got a dish that my father would be very proud of. I, I contributed this for a uh, for a cookbook, for mm. Chefs at Home cookbook for a hospitality action. It's a recipe that means something to you. Okay. So I've got a Saturday favourite of a lentil and rice kitchri mm -hmm. with a roasted aubergine brush. Really pokey and punchy with mustard. Um, you'll love that. Yeah. It, I, I did love it. it. And that mustard oil is yeah. it's, it's mad. It is. Really, really pokey. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah you'll like that one. I think I promise. I Theo Randall, what have you got for us? I'm doing a little twist on a classic. It's uh, cannelloni with Italian sausages. Uh, tomato, mozzarella, parmesan, all baked together. Really unctuous, delicious. You'll love it. No. I love, I love how you come dressed as the host for this show. <laughs> I, I always try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm after your job. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the sound of those dishes? Uh, yes. No, I'm completely in. And yeah. actually, I love Indian foods and I love Italian food. Well, that's lucky. So I know I've hit Excellent. the jackpot today. Excellent. Yes. Um, how did you get on at home? I love them, Matt. I think these are two family feasts. They feel like an informal treat. And I've got two wines, both emblematic of their places, big character for wines. And then I've also got the best bubbly for Mother's Day. Very nice. I'm slightly distracted by Ollie's deep V here today. <laughs> oh, I'll do it up. <laughs> no, it's no, no, it's cool. You I like it. That. You're rocking that 70s look. I like it, kid. <laughs> uh, <Certainly> now, <laughs> Now, as we said, it's not your first time on the show. I think no. it's your third time on the yes. show. Uh, so you know what's going on. Heaven and hell. At the end of the show, what's your idea of food heaven? Yes, yeah, so heaven, I suppose my best, best dish is a roast dinner okay. every Sunday. And really, that's the only dish I can sort of get to grips with. Right. Um, and I love anything salty, Matt. Okay. So, like, anchovies, capers. I yeah. put capers in anything, really. We had the smoothie machine out the other day, and Kev went, please don't put capers. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm not quite there yet. But, um, so, yeah, anything that kind of vibe. Um, hell. Smoothie machine, would that be like a blender? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying not to say the name. I'm trying to be sort of a TV pro. Well, but... I see. I'm not very good at that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm from uh, this time, of us. Um, And then hell, I suppose, is anything like, like fatty meats. Do you know what I mean? Right. When it sort of takes a while to chew it and swallow. Right. So... OK. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, so if the viewers uh, give you heaven, it's going to be a teeny tiny roast. So I'm going to roast a whole baby pusa. Uh, stuffed with garlic and thyme and bay. It's delicious. I'm going to serve that with some roasted carrots, shallots, cabbage, leeks and fennel. I'm going to finish that off with a garlic anchovy and vinegar paste Ooh. called an anchoide. Like the sound of that? Um, yes, I do. Good. If the viewers give you hell, however, it's going to be fatty pork. So I'm going to slow roast pork belly, uh, covered in garlic, fennel seed and chilli paste. I'm going to serve the pork with a red pepper, tomato, basil, pipperard uh, and a kale and garlic dressing. 
uh, obviously you're going to have to wait to the end of the show to find yes. out what you uh, what you get uh, don't forget guys go and log on to the website you can vote for Stacey's Heaven or Hell and you can view the terms and privacy notices as well uh, now as always we've been inundated it's my favourite part of the show get my oh yes inundated with pictures of the dishes you recreated at home this is an aerial off a of Four look at you! <laughs> Just working with Chuck. Chuck McCarr aerials, like yeah. And you had to pull up, the radio wouldn't go on, you had to get out and put them up. And you put a coat hanger on if it was someone next Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> nobody else, nobody else is not eating <laughs> Just the old boys in the room. Right, look at this lot. So, um, lots of Anna Jones's shepherd's pie going on here. Look at these. Uh, let's have a closer look. Right, first up, Beverly, who made uh, Stacey Solomon's Hell from last week's show. Livers and black pudding, very nice. Like that, somebody mm. liked it. Look, look at the styling. <laughs> the food styling on this show is getting ridiculous. It's very Instagram friendly, that, isn't, it? isn't it? Yeah. Like me. Quite like <laughs> you. Just like you. Just like you. Just joking. Uh, right, uh, Meg's on the board for the second week in a row with her food styling of my lamb shanks. Look at that. Look at all this. If it's going you, mad. If you could see the state of my kitchen, I've been making beans on toast and pot noodles nice. for about nine months. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel really, really fancy if I get, you know, like the sourdough bread oh, yeah. and slice it myself. That's really? as far as it goes. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> this, I'm in total awe. Look, look at this. Something else. Yeah. 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 Uh, Nicola got the memo about crumpled uh, tablecloths for her take on Anna Jones' chef pie. Look at that. You, that looks like nice out of your book, Thea. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say. But again, great styling. Finally, Brian's back. Made it to the top spot with my lamb shanks and his version of a crumpled tea cloth right there. What can I say? Just making noises. I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> making noises. I'm speechless. Uh, right, thanks for all those. Uh, keep coming over so I can get this out because it's always fun. Uh, to saturday.kitchen at cactustv.co.uk or share them using the hashtag Saturday Kitchen. Right, Vivek, you are cooking first. Theo, yeah. you are stepping out. I'm out of here. Uh, okay, okay, so this is a, a recipe uh, that kind of reminds you of your father. Yes, yeah. I mean, in, in our ancestral village in Balia, in, in uh, UP, Uttar Pradesh, uh, this is what they'd have every single Saturday. It can't be anything else, you know. Just Saturday? Yeah, it's a, it's a Saturday special, or if it's <laughs> overcast and, you know, cloudy and okay. cold. Um, really nourishing, yeah. very comforting, very... Um, okay. So, you know, just to block things out, you know, we've got, we've got some vegetables here. You can use whatever vegetables are in season. Um, not a lot of spicing going on. It's just, a, you know, a chilli and some cumin. That's pretty much it. Uh, I've got some rice and lentils. So one part of rice, yep. two parts of lentils. Okay. And then, um, so let me just put that in for boiling. And so whatever your quantity of rice and lentils are, you take six times the amount of water and then you start, you know, you okay. sort of boil that. And this is, this is, this is called a kitchri. Yeah, it's a kitchri. It's the you know it's the original kitchri, as um, as uh, we say. You know, it's the the original okay. kitchri came from here. Um, in but, India, they no use fish. rice and lentil. Um, so I'm going to add a bit of turmeric mm. and a bit of salt into the water. Okay. To boil, and the and, uh, and would the thing is going to just cook. And would the uh, the turmeric uh, give it a taste, or is it more for colour? It's it's more for colour and for its therapeutic sort of, you know, um, antiseptic properties. OK. So and, and when you put those lentils in, are they being pre-soaked? They've been washed and soaked. Right. And then, of course, I drained it and then, you know... Sure. So we've got okay. this aubergine that we stud with you, you, cloves what, of garlic. you soak those overnight? Um, no, no, you, you know, um, but half an hour is good. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, half an hour, 30 minutes. What are you doing to that aubergine? Uh, so the aubergine, I've just sort of, you know, made gashes onto it. OK. Um, studded it with some... Cloves of garlic. Mm. Okay. And that simply goes straight on to an open flame. Okay. Normally, you'd, you know, you'd be cooking on wood fire and what have you. Right. You just simply put it on the burning woods and they'll burn and char. You don't use the skin, anyways. So, what you do is you, once it's completely cooked, yeah. you peel it off and you chop it. Okay. So, you want that kind of smoky taste? Yes. That's you what don't you want, want any of the yeah, skin. Exactly. And, and you rub mustard oil on that? Yeah, I, I use mustard oil. That's, that's the, the oil they would use in, you know, in making this. So, we've got some. It's quite a pokey flavour, mustard oil, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very, very punchy, almost wasabi esque, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It so, really is. I mean, it, it absolutely carries throughout this whole dish, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. This is it. You know, it's, it's about small quantities, simple cooking, yeah. few ingredients, yeah. but lots of, you know, um, lots of flavour. 
And you said earlier, you touched on it earlier, this is one of two recipes that you've written for a charity cookbook. Correct. You know, hospitality, hospitality Action came up with this idea in lockdown, you know, just to yeah. support the hospitality industry, which was on its knees and all the people who work on it, you know, sure. in, in it. Um, came with, you know, so the John Croft, who's... Uh, you know, he's an absolute prima donna in food publishing for, <laughs> for hundreds of years, I suppose, yeah. Right. So, you know, when he, um, when he contacted me to say, you know, if you'd, you know, give a recipe, contribute a recipe for it, there's 50 chefs contributed two recipes each. Yeah. They could have asked 500 people and everybody would have done it and you'd just yeah, have a yeah, yeah. massive volume. Yeah. But that is it, you know, it is... But it was about sort of simple cooking that you could do in with, you know, sure. store cupboard ingredients. Yeah. And it's got recipes. And, I, you know, I just couldn't put the book down last night. Yeah. Um, no, I, I was looking uh, through it. There's, there's Tom Kerridge, there's Raymond Blanc, there's Mitch yeah. Tonks, there's... Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a huge, it's a great Ainsworth. lineup. It's all, it's all a, manner it's... of uh, chefs in there. Yeah. Right, so what so was I'm, that? So I've yeah, put the red chilies in there. Okay. One red chilli, actually. And the cumin, and as it splutters, I'm going to add the garlic. Yeah. It is, a, it is a very straightforward recipe, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very straightforward recipe, especially, you know, when you think of Indian food, you think of, you know, hundreds of spices and lots of complex ingredients. Yeah. This isn't anything like it, you know. It's... Is this the sort of thing you'd have a crack at? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Only because <laughs> this is totally up my street and I adore garlic and yeah. I love aubergine. Um, but I can't cook. I'm particularly useless. Right. Um, Have you not sort of got your head around it during the whole lockdown? Lock well, no, lockdown, this right? is it. I suppose the whole of the UK yeah. have learned how to bake and learned how to cook. Not you. I, I look at these images <laughs> and I'm, I can't quite believe it. But do you know what it is? It's the hassle of... I think there's two things. Yeah. So I go into the supermarket and I think, right, let's, you know, really think about this. But I don't know what ingredients match with what. Right. So I get my cuisines muddled. Okay. It's a bit of a fusion. Okay. But it... Well, that's all right, as long as it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not hard and fast rules. A yeah. Japanese taco or something. Yeah, great. And then... Anything goes these days. When I get in the kitchen, you know, the pots are everywhere and I think, oh, I've got to wash all this up. Right. Um, so... Okay, yeah. so you're either half of the cook, is it? Now, he's useless too. Oh, okay, brilliant. And the pair of us have just been yeah. eating literally beans on toast and then... Delivery, takeaway. Well, that's doing your bit to support the industry, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, what's going in the. Yeah, pan so, you know, the onions and the garlic are sauteed, you know, sauteing off. Mm -hmm. I've chopped some uh, cauliflower. Um, that's going to go in as well. In just a minute. Um, I'm going to add a bit of salt. As you do. Um, now, you've got a big anniversary coming up this month 20 years of the Cinnamon Club. Wow. Massive, isn't it? I mean, yeah. May. <laughs> and what a fantastic restaurant it is. A oh, real, yeah, a I mean, real it's, addition. It's, it's rather special, is it not? It, it just is. is you know, Have you ever been? Special. No, I would love to. Actually, as soon as as soon as I'm allowed, I come and see it. It's so nice. It's set in a set yeah. in an old library. The old Westminster Library, and that's where you know my journey started off. Yeah. Uh, twenty years ago, um, you know, twenty years ago, if you'd asked me what, can you look look ahead and see what twenty years ahead would yeah. look like? I could never have picked it. You know, Life's you could never mad, have. Isn't it? I mean, here we were opening up a fine dining restaurant, you know, trying to do modern modern Indian cuisine. Yeah. Uh, turning up our, <laughs> our noses at sort of you know even doing takeaway at the up at the end of the street. Yeah. And here we are. 20 funny, years old. funny how uh, what life throws you. Eh? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. you're, you 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 call it. Um, oh, I'm being I'm being told. You, but turn your lentils down, Vivek. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's fine. Um, sort of I mean, you up. call it, you know, takeaway, but these these restaurant boxes are something yeah. else. I mean, I I had one from you a while back, and there's there's gold leaf in it. <laughs> and my son was like, "What is that?" <laughs> yeah, you know what? It, it's, so we it's, ate it. It's been, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be saying. You know, it's, been, it's been phenomenal. The meal kits have been really keeping us going. I mean, you started doing it just before Christmas, and um, I. You know, uh, you featured one a few weeks ago mm. on the, you know... Yes, show. we had it on the show, that's right. Yeah, you had it on the show. Um, we gave I mean, they're really... Few... These restaurant boxes are really something now. And I think a lot of them will stay. When life goes back to normal, I think people have realised it's another outlet, really. Yeah. I know you need a lot of, you know... You need a lot, but, you know, it's, it's given us purpose, it's given us, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, kept the teams engaged and busy and, you know, sort of doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's been really good. I mean, the really good, the other, obviously, that. the other great thing is the fact that there's people all over the country who can't necessarily get down to London can now yeah. try... Yeah, now food. we do. You know, we, we, like I said, you know, we... So we keep coming up with new, new things and 
And so because we couldn't do our anniversary in any, yeah. any meaningful kind of way, yeah. we've created a special sort of 20th anniversary meal kit box. Basically, seven courses, wow. seven or eight <laughs> courses of... Wow. Um, Put that sort on of your list. Some of Yay. our favourite, favourite dishes from the last 20 years. Right. And it's all gone in there. Nice. Um, it's, it, you know, it, but, but the thing is, it doesn't need lots of cooking. Yeah. All you need is an oven and a, chi <laughs> and a chair next to it. Probably. Right. Yeah. And in my experience, a pair of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so you can read yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course, you know. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's how we kind of keeping it going and keeping it. Right. Busy. Well, so you're back the, to normal. So the carrots and the cauliflower and stuff went in there. Okay. Uh, sorted off with the onion and garlic. The green peas will go in there. And these, these veg aren't sort of set in stone, they're whatever's in season. Exactly, yeah. So you, you, you know, sort of, you use the seasons and your availability. As I said, yeah. it's, uh, it's quite a flexible dish. Right. Also forgiving, you know, in the sense that in the sense that you could just adapt and use what you want to use. OK. So, so it's a real fill. rice and the lentils went in. Yeah. Into the vegetables. I'm just going to take a bit of... Smells incredible, doesn't it? You wait it does. Taste. It, well, right. it, feels a, it feels a lovely way to sort of bid farewell to the colder months and, and welcome in more fragrant times. And just thinking of the cinnamon club, I, I, the last 20 years, you know, what's, what's happened with wine there? Mm. You know, yeah. pioneering amazing pairings with Indian cooking. I love it, Vivek, and I'm just so grateful for all the pairings I've enjoyed there. Yeah, we were one of the early ones, but, uh, Ollie. You know, th thanks for picking that up. That was very heartfelt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, yeah. it was. That was, that was a genuine it? moment there for me. Well, uh, yeah, because way, way, you know, a few years ago, it was for some reason it was thought that maybe Indian food couldn't pair with wine, which is of course nonsense. Mm. It can pair with all wines, mm. yeah. and Vivek was absolutely at the forefront of that. And yeah. it's, uh, no, it means a lot because. Celebrating wine and great food, it's, it's what I'm all about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the world's come a long way since, since sort of the days of, you know, thinking of only lager yeah. as an accompaniment <laughs> to go with Indian food. Um, yeah. I still like one, though. Yeah, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest with you. Of course you do. <laughs> Whenever I order Indian, I'm so boring, you'll be mortified to hear this. I always go for a chicken korma. Of course. <laughs> and Pesh <laughs> and Peshwari yeah. naan. I need to be a bit more... <laughs> well, uh, there's nothing wrong with a chicken korma and a peshwari naan, I tell you. I put vinegar on it, which is a bit strange, right? Yeah, on your... On oh. the korma, the rice and the korma, and oh, then, yeah. yeah. It's just like a little kick, isn't it? Just a little, yeah. <laughs> a bit, yeah, good yeah, like, like a pickleback. Just a touch of salt in both. OK. There you go. So the, so the, the lentils are well cooked, they're kind of... Um... The lentils and the rice is completely cooked off. The vegetables... Yeah. Oh. The vegetables... Yeah. Sort of, and, yeah. and the aubergine had the, some more mustard oil, mustard garlic... Mustard oil, salt, onion, garlic... Uh, and parsley. Coriander. Coriander, sorry. Yeah. Some people don't right, like so... coriander, right? Yeah, a lot of people. I don't mind it at all. That's good. My pal Harriet can't stand it. Really? Which is really interesting for all of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Matt. You're welcome. Right, so <laughs> we've got that. It's all kind of, you know, ready. And then... Beautiful. All and you then, do is... And, finish. and that's uh, that more ghee? This is ghee, yeah. I mean, you could skip the ghee and it'll, it'll be a completely vegan dish, but, you know, this is a way of mums showing their love just before they serve up. Just a couple of more spoonfuls of calories. Yes. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yes, it's syrup. And so there we are. Remind us what it's called. It's a rice and lentil kitchery and a roasted aubergine crush. With Brilliant. Rice. You almost picked it up. <laughs>
No, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you may be on the show 60 times or something, Thank but you, you almost Matt. picked it up. Thank you, Thank you ever so much. Right, OK, while we tuck into this, Ollie, what have we got? Thank you. We have Tesco finest Torrontes. Torrontes is a grape from Argentina. It's emblematic of its place in the north, oh. up in Cafajate, Salta, very high in the mountains. So cold climate, but arid, and that intensifies the flavours of these glorious grapes. 2019 was a great vintage. When you smell it and you taste yeah. it, it's almost as though a grapefruit has gone on a joyride through an elderflower bush. It's fragrant <laughs> and yet it's refreshing. And that's the ticket with this. I find that with the dish, actually, when I paired it, it really brought out the cumin flavours. And for me, stunning value for money, but also really marries up beautifully with flavours like cumin. Fragrant, refreshing, a cracker for a springtime Ooh. white man. That, that was one of your best lines ever, by the way. <laughs> I do want to let that go. What was it, a joyride oh, right. to a gooseberry bush or something? <laughs> Elderflower. Something like that, yes. Yeah, something something like something that. It was grapefruits joyriding through something That's else, it. yeah. Um, this is really delicious. So it's simple, right. but that, the punch from that mustard oil. Yeah, it's just quite something else, isn't Incredible. it? Incredible. But I have to say, Ollie, you've, you've absolutely excelled here. You know, it's not just a challenge to pair something with mustard oil or mustard, but, you know, you know the, the acidity in the wine is really bringing out the creaminess in the aubergine. It's just... So, so, so it's, delicious. This is, so, this is magic. Isn't Thank it good? So Thank much. you for that. Thank isn't you. It it's just. Thank you. It's so a, nice. A you one. keep smiling. You're having I, a lovely time. I'm having you? a great, great day. I'm having a lovely day <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. You, your mate Harriet, isn't you? just called her. Harriet, out. poor old Harriet. <laughs> I haven't seen her in ages. Hello, Harriet. She won't be watching. <laughs> Coming up, I'll be making a walnut and caramel tart. And Theo Randall is making his delicious sausage and tomato cannelloni. I can't say it. Uh, don't forget to keep sending in your foodie photos or questions to us at saturday.kitchen at cactustv.co.uk or join in the chat on social media using the hashtag SaturdayKitchen. And we'll stay see face her food heaven roast dinner tiny roast dinner with a roast poussin and a medley of roasted vegetables or a food hell pork belly with kale dressing go and log onto the website now and have your say you can have another mouthful i can see it I'm not <laughs> time, to catch, time to catch up with rick stein now as he continues his trip through the dordoin oh. and this week he's exploring the traditional method of making walnut oil mm. We've all missed the chance to share a celebratory meal with friends. So how would you like to have a special dinner party thrown in your honour with food made by a world-famous celebrity chef and all your drinks professionally matched by experts? Sounds impossible in these difficult times, but this year to raise money for comic relief, we're giving you the chance to win the ultimate celebration. On Saturday the 10th of April, we're hosting a unique virtual dinner party to bring you and your friends or family together for an unforgettable evening. The lucky winner, along with a partner or a friend, will be able to invite five other sets of friends to join in from their homes, making it a dinner party for 12 people. And the best thing is, as the party is virtual, you don't have to wash up for everyone. We'll send you and your five sets of guests a restaurant box for two from the legendary Rick Stein, cocktails to get the evening started, plus wine matches from our experts, Helen and Ollie, that we'll all drink along together. The three-course meal will start with more marinier, followed by a delicious Indonesian fish curry, all rounded off with passion fruit eaten mess for pud. And don't worry if you're vegetarian, we'll look after you guys as well. Rick and Jack Stein will be with us on the night to help guide you through cooking and plating the dishes just like a professional chef. And to keep the party going, these two here will be there to tell us what to drink and when to drink it, making sure your glasses are kept topped up. You'll be able to chat to Jack and Rick and the rest of us throughout the evening and ask us anything you want. So, if you'd like the opportunity to join us at our virtual top table on Saturday the 10th of April, here are all the details you need. For your chance to win this one-off prize whilst having the opportunity to donate £5 to Comic Relief, text the word DINNER to 81155. Once you receive confirmation of your entry, a one-off voluntary donation of £5 will be made to Comic Relief. You can opt out of the donation by replying CANCEL to your entry confirmation text within 60 minutes should you wish. Entry text will be charged at your standard network message rate and you need to be 18 or over and have the bill payer's permission. Full details and terms and conditions can be found at bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. The prize draw will close for entries at 11pm on Saturday the 20th of March 2021. And if you're watching on demand, please do not enter after this time as your entry will not count, but you will still be charged. The lucky winner will be randomly selected and notified by phone between the 22nd and the 25th of March and announced live on Saturday Kitchen on the 27th of March 2021. So, good, good luck. luck, everyone.
look a bit too casual in a T-shirt and shirt, I'm thinking. I don't think it's that's suits not, you. That's not a look for me, I'm thinking now. I thought that was a good look. Anyway, what a great prize. Are you excited, <laughs> Ollie? I'm tremendously excited. Sharing that with our viewers and the chance to be with all those wonderful people. Rick and Jack and Helen, I cannot wait. It's going to be good, isn't it? And you get to hang out with me again on Zoom. Uh, well, now... <laughs> he loves it. Uh, now, on his Dordogne trip, Rick found out how walnut oil is made and taking inspiration from that, I thought he'd make a little walnut and caramel tart, which is a bit like a pecan tart. Uh, so, very, very quickly, don't forget all the recipes are on the website. I've got uh, some maple syrup, I've got some uh, golden syrup, so roughly equal quantities. I've uh, got some butter, so let's get that in a pan and start heating that up. We've got to melt the butter. And then I've got, uh, I've got some eggs, a little bit of corn flour to bind the mix, and some sh more sugar. Sounds like a lot of sugar in this, but it works. It trust is. Me. It is. It is, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, it, it, it works. So let's get that in there. You know, let's get a spoon. And then very simply, uh, an awful lot of walnuts going in there. Now, if you're... If you're a bit sort of two minds about walnuts, they can be very kind of bitter. Uh, the best time to eat them, I think, is probably uh, when they're what they call wet walnuts. So later on in the year, or sort of autumn time, where they don't have that bitterness, uh, they're very kind of soft, and uh, I think they're delicious. What do you think, Chef? I think well, when the skins get dark, that's when they get bitter. So when you've got really light skins, that's when they're really, really they haven't got that bitterness. So yeah, I mean, wet walnut, wet, wet, wet walnuts are delicious. And easy to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, um, you know, I can't remember what they were called, but on the way to school, this is disgusting. A walnut whip? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you remember? Now you're talking. And, yeah. and two blue ice poles for my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ice you poles. must have been really buzzing when you got I were. That takes me back. <laughs> I know, yeah. Is it the walnut whip? I thought they took the one out the bottom. I'm not sure about that. I think there used to be, used uh, like, to be a too... whole, like a proper whole walnut on top, but yeah. they, they cut it in half, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Cut back. Cool. How things change, eh? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right, OK, so give this a mix, and then not too hot with this mixture. Pour it in, cos you don't want to cook the eggs, uh, and that's pretty much it. So corn flour going in here as well. Uh, let's whisk that in. Right, and that's it. We'll come back to that in just a minute. So, Stacey... DNA Family Secrets, oh. my new guilty pleasure. Last one goes out on Tuesday, 9 o'clock. I'm so pleased, I'm so delighted you like it. I really I mean, liked it. So many people have sang to it. I think they find it really interesting. I think naturally there's um, a real curiosity surrounding our DNA. And I think over the last couple of years, certainly, yeah. we're all buying the packs, aren't we, and sort of taking us swabs. Yeah, my, my, uh, my, my son's done it. Oh, OK. He's, he's absolutely fascinated yeah. by this. And it was such a treat. It was a real privilege. I really mean it. Like, we had the most brilliant contributors. Really honest, really accommodating, really warm. I mean, there was a guy called Bill in the first episode who everyone's fallen madly in love with. A total sweetheart, such a gem. Yeah. Um, and his story was pretty astonishing. Um, so, essentially, he was an older guy in his 70s and he never really had a real idea of who his biological father was. Um... And he was uh, an American GI, and he had come, he'd come over, and he'd met Bill's mother, etc. Um, and he said, "It's now or never, really. You know, if I don't ask now, I'm." Well, that's right. Yeah. I mean, the time, time was ticking, and yeah. that, that, that made it more the kind of crucial. Yeah, and we were able to take his DNA. We were able. I mean, you know, the genealogists yeah. and the geneticists <laughs> and the social workers, and but um, took his DNA and found living relatives in the states. So it was. Um, and it, and it is. Those moments are really, really emotional. I mean, we're, we're giving this a, a, a good sell. If, you, if you've missed it, you can watch it, obviously, on the BBC iPlayer, and it is well worth catching up with. And there was those, those two, two guys who thought they were brothers. They yeah. were convinced, and I was convinced they were brothers. Yeah. They looked very similar. So there were two guys who... Um, I think they were in their 40s, um, and they had, they'd never known each other, and then one of our guys received a text saying, look, I think I'm your father, your biological father. And the man who had raised him had always been a brilliant, you know, father. Yeah. He wasn't around anymore. So I think people find it really interesting because it feels very relatable. Like, you know, there's no such thing as, like, a traditional family anymore. You know, we've all got different relationships with different relatives, etc. so... I, I, I loved it. Did you love making it? I thoroughly enjoyed it, yeah. And I felt so lucky to have the work. You know what I mean? So we started Absolutely. before lockdown. Yeah. But then they allowed us to continue. Um, so really fortunate, yeah. I mean, how, how involved do you get? Is it difficult to get too kind of absorbed in the story? You... 
you really fall for the people that you're spending time with because yeah. you you don't underestimate the enormity of this for them. Um, because those, I mean, going back to those two guys, they really wanted to be brothers. Right. And they, he was absolutely gutted, wasn't he? That one. He, they were both. The guy with a big beard. They were both him. gutted, and, and we were gutted because we, we thought that they were brothers. But I think it's really important to be honest about absolutely what can happen when it comes to DNA. And you know, when you start opening Pandora's box, you know, it's not always this brilliant fairy tale at the end of it. You yeah. know, genetics are genetics. You know, they, we can't bend the truth or twist anything. So. Um, yeah, it was it was quite a roller coaster for everyone involved, but you know certainly them. Right. So before we go on with that, let's just recap this. So so this is a blind baked tart shell. Um, like I said, recipes on the website. Um, filled with some chopped walnuts, and then you get your your mix, uh, ladle it in, um, which now makes it incredibly difficult to move it to the oven without <laughs> spilling it. Oh, so okay. a really good to <laughs> top tip for what I should have done is filled it at the oven. So talk amongst yourselves. Uh, Don't spill any. Now I've got to open the oven door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so seamless, isn't it? Very smooth. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, OK, so that goes in for about 45, 50 minutes, uh, 150. And then it comes out looking like this. Ta da! Isn't that delicious? Uh, so I'm going to serve this with a little bit of creme fraiche. Uh, obviously, a little grating of walnut, or, um, walnuts as well. But we've got this really fancy walnut oil, and it was, this was really interesting. So this little bottle here, which I thought was really, really pale. So this is about 10 quid. Now, this is a, a regular kind of shop-bought one. Look at, the, look at the difference in colour mm. to that. So this is the kind of the mass-produced stuff. This is about 2 quid, this is about 10 quid. So, you, so that's the difference. But this, you've got them in front of you. If you want to do a little oil tasting... Yes. Uh, see, see if you can spot the difference. But I think, I mean, this is, is really... It's very subtle. It's very sort of grassy tasting. Have they got a smell to it? Oh, wow, yeah. It's got a, it's got a, a slight aroma, but the, the taste... Usually a walnut oil has got a real kind of uh, in-your-face... Oh, I see. You know it's walnut oil. But that's, it's a very it's subtle... The darker one tastes more like roasted walnuts, and the other one isn't. It's a, it's it's a, a much, much more fresher pure, press, pure essence, yeah. Very it's good, a yeah. really daft question. So this comes from the a walnut, walnut itself. Yes. Just... Yeah. So basically, so the, the, you, you crush the nut and you get the oil. I see. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, anyway, that was quite interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. I think I prefer which the is, clearer one. Actually. The clearer, the clearer one's much nicer. It's got much nicer flavour. The other one's got slightly oily, isn't it? Tastes a bit like tree bit bark, yeah. a bit barky. Barky. A bit barky. Again, that's a slightly bitter. <laughs> yeah. Tang. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So you think it, I mean, would you think it's worth paying extra? I, I think that the the light one's really delicious. Yeah, I do actually. Right. Really nice in a in a in a smoothie, wouldn't it? It would be great in a smoothie. Yeah. You're absolutely Ooh. right. Yeah. In your smoothie machine. <laughs> Hysterical that I'm offering opinion because I'm so <laughs> useless <laughs> in the kitchen. I'm useless. Um, right. While I finish this off, um, you've got a new series. Stacey Dooley sleeps over. I know. I'm everywhere at the what moment. What are you thinking? I can only apologise. That is. That is. <laughs> that's. That's a hard gig. It's an interesting gig, and you know what people always say. So the premise is, um, I visit. Um, interesting families around the UK and I arrive on Friday at their house, stay the entire weekend and then leave on the Monday. So it's, it's quite immersive. Sorry, Ollie, I keep forgetting you. So it's quite, <laughs> it's quite immersive and you sort of turn up with your, you know, your suitcase and you really do stay there. People always say, do you really stay there? But do you really sleep there? And I genuinely do. And um, it's a really... Because that's, that's incredibly hard. If you're asking <laughs> tricky questions or you maybe rub them up the wrong way, you're in their house. Yeah. You can't go and yeah, decompress. No, it's, it's so awkward. And, that's the, and sometimes, you know, it's my job to ask these questions. Yeah. So you know you've got to sort of bite the bullet, but you also know you've got to sit down with them that evening and have dinner. Yeah, that must be on. And then oh, yeah. you've got to ask them how you turn the shower on. Have you, you ever... Know? And have you, have you <laughs> had the awkward moments? Totally. I mean, I won't give too much away, but... The families in this series, we've got a lad who's got two lions and a puma. Obviously. Um, <laughs> As you do. <laughs> we've got a um, child model family. We've got... Who else have we got? That's ridiculous. They've, oh, I've got a beautiful... Fa um, Hasidic Jewish family. Yeah. Um, we've, got, we've got a really lovely bunch. Right. But, the, but an eclectic the, mix. The guy with the lions, I mean, you've got to essentially say to him, is this... 
allowed. Is this ethical? Like, how do you feel about mm. these massive, beautiful? He's, he's a, calls himself the British, British Lion King. Uh, yeah, I think he's gone with with that title. Right. Um, but his mother was like, you know, it was so interesting because you spend so many, you spend time with the family, and obviously there are beautiful traits too. So. Yeah. Yeah, tricky. <laughs> I mean, whoever came up with that is kind of genius, kind of lunacy. <laughs> Monday midday, I'm like, I'll see you later. Yeah. I can't get out here. So you just go to, to a nice hotel and decompress and get your head. It's my car on the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, not until Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Anyway, tuck into that. Thank Try you. that. Um, what will I be making for Stacey at the end of the show? Will it be a food heaven, a uh, roast dinner? If so, I'm going to roast a whole baby poussin, stuffed with garlic and thyme and bay. I'm going to serve that with some roasted carrots, shallots, cabbage, leeky oh. fennel. So and I'm going to finish it off with a garlic anchovy and vinegar paste called an anchoise. Or will it be uh, food hell, roast pork? So I'm going to slow roast pork belly, covered in garlic and fennel seed and chilli paste. I'm going to serve the pork with a red pepper, tomato and basil pivorade and a kale and garlic dressing. The vote is very, very close, I have to say. It's oh. literally... Literally neck and neck. Be nice, please be nice. Had you not upset Harriet earlier? I say, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, go and have your say. Go and have a look at the website right now. Uh, how is that? Amazing. Good. Delicious. Really good. Okay. Really Excellent. Good. Uh, right, let's move on. Uh, still to come. If you haven't yet got something to spoil your mum on Mother's Day tomorrow, Ollie could have the answer, couldn't you, all? I certainly have. I've got a bargain of lard and an absolute steal. And Stacey will be facing her food heaven roasted poussin with roasted vegetables or her food hell pork belly with pipperade and kale dressing. Vote is still very close. Go and get on onto the website now and have your say. Right, Theo, it's your time to cook. Ha ha. Cook me food. OK, so I'm going to do a kind of take on a classic cannelloni. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of using a mince or ricotta spinach mixture, I'm using sausages, Italian sausages. OK. Uh, we're going to add some celery and some onion to the sausage. We're going to add some red wine. Make this mix, mix it with ricotta and parmesan breadcrumbs, and then we're going to do a tomato sauce, bake it in the oven with lots of mozzarella on top. Nice. How does that sound? Very nice. Those sausages look... These sausages are amazing. So these are Italian sausages. You can get these from any decent Italian deli. OK. And you can just uh, score the skin, and the sausage meat will come out. And the reason I'm using the Italian sausages is they've got a bit of cured meat in there as well, so they've got this amazing flavour. So you have, like, pancetta and you have a little bit, like, prosciutto in there. So well worth seeking so out. Really worth seeking out. And they're kind of seasoned. You don't have to edit, add any salt. Uh, some of them have, like, you know, a bit of chilli in there, some of them have fennel seeds. Uh -huh. So they've got masses and masses of flavour. So I just take them out of the skin and then literally just break them up and they come out this sort of big, chunky kind of mince and you get this amazing fat. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sear them off in a dry pan and we're going to add the celery and onion and the red wine. But basically, all that fat's going to come out and make it taste really delicious. And talking of delis, your new book has finally, finally dropped, as they say. <laughs> It's taking a bit of time, isn't it? I know. Yeah, you've been um, talking about it for about a year. I know. I think I've. I think it spoke, to, it spoke too soon. It's. Uh, it's a very beautiful book. Thank you. I have to say, it's got a nice touchy feely cover. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of crumpled linen going on. There's a lot of crumpled linen in there, but you know, it's sort of that's sort of, that's sort of, that's you know, it's kind of nice. It's about cooking at home. It's about these sort of recipes that. See that, Tom? You know, a bit, a bit of crumpled linen you, going on there. This is a really interesting recipe. So you've put red wine in your bagna cauda. So that recipe traditionally is... Um, the bagna cauda comes from Piedmont. Yeah. And Piedmont obviously hasn't got any... You know, near the, it's not near the sea. And so, dip. Which is a bit odd that bagna cauda has anchovies in it. Yeah. And the reason for that is the, um, the Piedmontese used to trade with the Venetians and they would send them down wine, because obviously the Piedmont make the most amazing wine, Barolo. Yeah. And they'd send barrels down full of wine in exchange for barrels full of salted anchovies. Oh. And so that's how you've got, got dishes like... Didn't know um, that. Vitello Tonato, Banya Cauda, those sort of dishes, because they're all using anchovy. And that one is using red wine Nebbiolo, which is the, 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 um, the grape of uh, Piedmont, right. of Barolo. And it's basically you do the same sort of things you would normally with milk, but you reduce the garlic cloves down with the red wine. Right. And then you mix in the anchovies mm. and olive oil. I love, I love those little sort of stories behind the food. How it travels, where it's from, what's, uh, what it's all about. And the, the book is broken down. It's, it's like walking around a deli. So you it's, see the eggs, you see the oil, you see the vinegars, the tins... 
tin fish, the... Exactly. So when I was writing the book, I was just thinking about... Cannelloni. Cannelloni. Thank you, Ollie. So when I was writing the book, I was just thinking, visualising what it's like to walk around an Italian deli. And, yeah. You know, you think we've got the dry pasta, yeah. you've got the kind of fresh counter where they've got, you know, all this, the salamis, you've got the cheeses, the mozzarella, the barassa, that kind of thing. So, so, so it's broken down, so you, you explore each one in turn? Exactly, exactly. OK. And where would you find the cannelloni recipe in that book? What, what page? Yeah. No, not what page. What, what section? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got my glasses. I can't read the it's, text. It's under the Itali Italian sausages. There's quite a large section on okay, Italian sausages. Okay. I love Italian sausages. A whole, whole lot of uh, risottos with them, um, pastas. So, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a, a packed uh, chapter, that one. OK, so just yes, recap. sorry. So I've cooked the sausages, got a bit of fat out of the sausages. We've got the celery and onion there. I'm just softening the garlic. I always like to add a bit of uh, basil when I'm making a tomato sauce. A mm -hmm. bit of fresh basil in with the garlic and the olive oil. And then we add the tomato passata. Mm -hmm. Try and use tomato passata rather than chopped tomatoes because you want a nice sort of kind of wet, um, smooth sauce. So add that, cook that down. So Do you those... know what? Every time I go shopping I, uh, and I look at I have to buy tin tomatoes, or is it, you told me a fact. A bit of red wine. Yep. OK, thank you. Flag it out. Uh, I'm, I'm here to chat. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah, I, I'm doing all the work. I always, I always... It was nice when Matt was around. <laughs> like, you did a parsley, chop the garlic, you know. Yeah, quiet. Literally just lean on the edge there. Uh, I always think of that you told me a top tip once, and I can never remember which it is. <laughs> Do you buy whole, t whole tin tomatoes or chopped tin tomatoes? I always, I always oh. buy chopped tomatoes because the chopped ones don't have the seeds in. When you have the whole ones, they've always got the seeds in. And the seeds, when they cook, make the, the tomato sauce go bitter. There you yeah. go. But actually, the best thing to do is to get passata, the ones with the, um, the uh, jar with the lid on. Because the thing yeah. about that tomato is you open the tin, you use the whole lot. Uh, okay. okay, so I've actually pre cooked the, um, the uh, sausage here with the celery and onion and the red wine. I've got some ricotta, I've beaten up an egg. I've got the ricotta in. Nice. We're going to use a few breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs just sort of fill it out. And then a bit of parmesan. Do you know a what little, I've realised? Bit of sage in here as well. I think another flaw in my cooking journey is in my entire kitchen. I've only got four bowls. Ah. Uh, and I'm just looking. Uh, how many? One. We have a lot three, of bowls four, here. Five, you should take four, some today. <laughs> Honestly, you should. You should see it. Don't There's advertise that. There's so many bowls that. here. <laughs> you get this? They got a shed outside. I'm going <laughs> to pinch some on have the way a, out. I'll tell you what. Have a yes. look under here later. I'm going to help myself. And full knives, of bowls. hands, anything you want. It That's is the it. kingdom of bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be wobbling back to the car because I've also asked them to box up all the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could do really well out of this. OK, so I've mixed the ricotta in, the sausage. We've got the um, parmesan breadcrumbs in there and the egg. And then we're just going to... I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to taste it, but actually it's got amazing flavour because the sausages have got so much flavour. Yeah. There's a seasoning in there. So. I mean, the other nice thing we should say about, about deli shopping is the fact that you buy such good quality. You don't have to do much to it when you get it home. Well, that's the beauty of this recipe. Everything here, the cannelloni, the parmesan, the mozzarella, the passata, the sausages, everything's coming from a deli. Yeah. You're getting it from one place, which yeah. is kind of quite nice. And, and right. the quality of it, you know, the, the ingredients you get in Italian delis is so good. Right. OK, so cannelloni. Yeah. Always pi dried? Piping, but you can make fresh, get a fresh piece of pasta and then do it. But I kind of like this one because it's already made and it's okay. quite easy. And it sort of tastes better when you bake it for a longer time. Right. I'm actually going to turn this off. There we go. Um, so pop that in. Can you say cannelloni? Cannelloni. Oh, you can. She can. Cannelloni. <laughs> 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 All right, don't show off. But I can't so, say aubergine. I say it in a very posh way. Aubergine. 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 It's aubergine, isn't okay. it? Yeah. Aubergine, aubergine. Yeah, it's yeah. my middle class upbringing. All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you just put the piping bag in, put it in the, in the, uh, over the uh, cannelloni. Cannelloni. And then <laughs> just you. push it all the way so it really fills, completely full. All right. OK, do one more. OK. In it goes. Right, now, we're going to get tomato sauce. We made this tomato sauce. Um, get a nice spoonful of tomato sauce. You're busy, aren't you? A bit of olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> You're always out of okay. breath. <laughs> <laughs> and then rub the olive oil all over the pan. Get a cup. You're right there. Yeah, I'm Maybe good. A drink or something. I'm good. OK. He's having the time of his oh, life. I'm all right. Thing, right? Um, don't worry about me. Tomato sauce. And then... So it's, it's going to be a bit weird when it goes back to normal. Mm. I'm going to have to start running around again. <laughs> oh, God. I know. OK, so... It's getting used to this. Can only go in like this. And then we're going to put tomato sauce on top. OK. Right, you're opening the restaurant soon. 
Yes, can't Seven, wait. 17th of... 18th, 18th of... Um, 18th of May. 18th of May. Yep. Excited? Very excited, yeah. Are you going to do those lovely menus? You we are, do? we are. We're going to start off with uh, Sicily, the regional menus. So oh. We're going to do Sicily. That was the one you ended on, wasn't we, it? Well, we kind of, we had all these bookings for the whole of the month. I've kind of adjusted it slightly because of the right. season. But, yeah, we had all these, these bookings for the month of um, November, so we had to, unfortunately, cancel them all. So I want to do Sicily again. OK. I've been to Sicily a couple of times. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah I like it? gorgeous. Though. I loved it. The oranges size the reds, aren't they? Yeah. They're <laughs> massive, the oranges. <laughs> oh, no, they're, 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 it's Cedro, the lemons. They're, yeah, that's... Oh. The size of your head. Oh, am I thinking of the lemons? Yeah, you think of lemons. Or oranges, yeah. Rebet no, <laughs> standard, okay. standard size. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so, so we're doing a really lovely menu. The first menu we're going to do is uh, we're going to do an octopus salad with Tadjaska olives and um, potatoes, like a warm salad. Right. Um, and then we're going to do nice. uh, pasta alla norma. You know, okay, so classic Sicilian. Classic, but like really. Nice. And then we're going to do uh, grilled lamb rump with caponata. And salsa verde, and then we're going to finish off with a uh, delicious um, cannoli. Very right. cannolis, really nice. Yeah. Do you it's want to say it... something? Yeah, I just want to say that I'm, I'm just going in the oven, okay? <laughs> so this goes in the oven. Um, so it's going to go in for like 50 minutes at 150. Okay. 100, sorry, 180. And then I'm going to get this lovely thing. So what basically happens is it's such a simple dish, but you've got so much flavour from that, those sausages. It's going to go through into all that pasta and that tomato sauce and the mozzarella is all sort of melted together. I'm just going to clear up a little bit of space here. OK. If you, um, could, uh, if you could put that on the board, that'd be lovely, Theo, so it doesn't melt the worktop. You've got another one, haven't you? What, worktop? <laughs> <laughs> OK, and then... A couple of plates. But those, we're going back to those menus, they are an absolute... I think they're an absolute steal. For the quality of the food, for where you are in London, and you get wine, it's amazing. And I think, you know... Don't put the price up just because I said that. <laughs> no, no, I mean, the point, the point is it's just so nice to sort of, you know, it's so nice for the team, it's so, so nice for everyone to sort of see different regions of Italy and, and be more... You know, well, you've got a lot of uh, Italian guys who you call on for... for kind yeah, of... I've got a lot of Italian guys, girls and boys in the kitchen, and, you know, they're all... They're, it's kind of lovely. They sort of they get very passionate about it if it's their region that we're doing. Yeah, sure. And, you know, they call up their grandmother and their grandmother gets on the phone and talks right. about the dish. You know. And it's just... It just makes whole things sort of... Yeah, and then you get all the recipes. No, I get I nick all the recipes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there we go. A bit of olive oil. A little bit of Lovely. basil. Lovely. It's simple, but I tell you what, it is delicious. So a bit of fresh basil. Oh, look at you with all the garnish. Right. Ooh. Look. There we go. <laughs> Looks amazing. Remind us what it's called. So that's my cannelloni with Italian sausage, tomato, mozzarella, and a little bit of basil. Right, go and take a break. Okay. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you ever so much. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're so Thanks, good. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Uh, right, Ollie, what have we got? Big reds. We, well, we have a gorgeous red, Le Fili. This is Salice Salentino, which is 8 99 in Majestic. This comes from Puglia, and the grape is Negro Amaro, which is kind of fruity, a little bit herbaceous, and quite laid back and relaxed. It's a, it's a sort of cherry languishing in a bay leaf hammock. I love these wines, but they're, they're you a little bit of bitterness. Well they work so well with proteins like, and fatty flavours as well. But Negro Amaro really handles the heat down there, so it retains its acidity, fresh, light on its feet. Three women cousins are running this ship, and I think they are steering it in the right direction. That's, that is delicious. What do you wow. think of that? The food or the wine? The wine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the wine is amazing. I tell you what, I love... Salice San Antonio normally is, like, really heavy and alcoholic and, mm. like, kind of, I don't know, just over, over they can be, yes. That is delicious. In fact, it's not oaked. Yeah, that is delicious. This, yeah, this oaked, is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. I love the, the crispy bits on mm. the cannelloni. What do you think? <laughs> I'm in my element. Th I love Italian. Thank you ever so much. Uh, I'm going to come to your place. You must do, yeah. Yeah. Go and get one of those... Set meals. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. No, I'd love to. Regional, regional menu. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, have some decorum. <laughs> have some decorum, please. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the website vote is now closed. I'm going to find out whether Stacey's facing a food heaven or food hell very <laughs> soon. It's very close. Uh, don't forget, if you want to enter our fantastic prize draw, a virtual dinner party for 12 with me. Rick and Jack Stein, Ollie and Helen, whilst having the opportunity to donate five quid to Comic Relief, just head to our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen, where you can find all the details, including the full terms and conditions. Entries close at 11pm on Saturday, the 20th of March. 
Now, if, like me, you're usually buying gifts at the last minute, <laughs> not always, but sometimes, uh, Ollie's got a couple of present ideas for Mother's Day tomorrow, if anyone's got this tomorrow. Uh, you can still run out and get, uh, get some bits and pieces to impress your mother. What have you got, Ol? Well, I've got three brilliant bubblies, Matt. The first is an absolute steal for £3.80 in M&S. This is Fizero, because it's got no booze in it whatsoever. Good name. And yet... It's made with grapes from Germany that have cleverly been fermented. It's had the sugars reduced. It's bubbly. I think for £3.80, for a non-boozy option that the whole family can enjoy, I think that's an absolute stonker. And it has some finesse. It has some character. So you're getting sort of uh, the treat without the temptation. I haven't heard that since I was at school. <laughs> an absolute stonker. Um, so so £3.80... It's, it's yeah. along the lines of that, that lovely Fortnum & Mason one we had a while ago. It was about 15 quid, so it's a big price difference. Yes, made in a very similar way. So they're fermenting grapes uh, without alcohol um, and they're adding green tea. So the Fortnum's one, okay. lots and lots of fine leaf teas. This one, obviously, it's not going to be as prized. But I think, nonetheless, the quality is absolutely up there. I think that's delicious, actually. Stacey, do you like that one? Yeah, no, love it. I, I basically think whatever Ollie thinks yeah. when it comes to this one. <laughs> that's, that's how I see it as well. Yeah. Right, what's, uh, what's the second one then, Ollie? The second one, so this is my bargain fizz. This is 12 quid in Sainsbury's. This is called La Terrasse. It is a blend of grapes, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Noir, and Grenache Gris from the south of France. It's made to emphasise the fruit character. So it does have a secondary fermentation in the bottle, uh, but it's a fairly short one. And what that does, it gives us lift, it gives it great exuberance. And if you're serving mum a platter of fruit, it's the kind of wine, you know, that would go beautifully. Am I allowed to say with breakfast? Maybe a late breakfast on a Sunday morning. Serving your mother a platter of fruit. <laughs> platter of fruit. Well, really? my mum loves a strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. Um, quite dry. Quite try yeah. that. Now, this one, Ollie, quite frankly, has upset me because the other day I went out to another well known supermarket and I paid 10 quid more than this. Tell us about yes. it. Yes. So, this is Bollinger non vintage rose, and Ooh. that's part of the reason I've got it on the show. Morrison's have got it for 40 quid, and you can spend a lot more than that. Yeah. Bollinger you can spend here, 50. they spend time. You know, when you, think, when you think of the character, it takes time to make a champagne of this quality. They're more than 85% Grand and Premier Cru. They're fermenting in oak barrels. It's aged for a long time. It's Pinot dominant. So it's a rich, beautiful, bright rosé. If you really want to spoil mum this year, yeah. that would be, yeah, hard to beat. It's a yeah. delicious wine. Yeah, mum, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> do, you like a, do you like a drop of this? I certainly do. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. But actually, I think this is really very good too. If you consider the price difference. Yeah. yeah. But that's obviously got the finesse and the length. Smooth. Yeah, it's just, like it. it just keeps going, doesn't it? And really, that, really It makes smooth. you feel better. Yeah. It, it, once the restaurants open up, you will feel a lot better about the £40, £50. Pound yes, I will. You're right, because <laughs> you boys will be charging nearly £200. <laughs> Not long to go. That's, uh, that <laughs> is delicious. So, yeah, sorry I sport your uh, surprise there, Mum. Uh, so, will <laughs> Stacey be facing her food heaven roast poo sand with roast vegetables or a food hell pork belly with a kale dressing we're gonna find out after nigella gives us an italian take on steak and chips squishy squishy not crisp i'm not going to give you any tomatoes don't worry i know there's tomatoes Thanks for that, Nigella. Right, let's find out whether Stacey is facing her food heaven or her food hell. So, tiny, <laughs> tiny roast dinner, uh -huh. like roast dinner for one, or fatty pork belly. Big vote turnout today. Very big. Oh, we Very we? close. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think? I've always loved the British public, so I believe they won't let me down. Really? <laughs> That's confident. No! They love you. 53%. So 53% people. Well, that's not. Yeah, that was super tight. Yeah, it was. But oh. it was a lot of people. A lot of people <laughs> voted. So anyway, thank you for voting. All the recipes are on the website. Um, okay, so tiny, tiny roast chicken, a uh, little poussin, oh. um, enough for one, I think. Um, You've got some veg. You're going to make this anchoise. Yeah. Right? Yep. So anchoise. You love anchovies, so we're going to do a paste of shallots and garlic and uh, a tin of really good quality anchovies, and uh, and that's just basically basically a dip. Right. So let's get on with this. So what am I doing? So we're going to yes. stick some thyme inside this little bird. I'm a massive fan of shows you do like glow up, oh. which are just such fun. Thanks, Ollie. I mean that's the thing as well. You know, sometimes in telly, you don't know what it's like. They're desperate to put you in 
some kind of genre, you know? Are you a yeah. serious sort of journo that looks at current affairs issues? Or are you doing sort of factual entertainment that's a bit lighter, arguably? But I think actually... Why can't you do all... Why can't I, why can't yeah. I do a bit yeah. of both? And, and I'm a grown do. woman and, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm able to make those decisions. But this isn't me sort of paying lip service. The Beeb have been very good to me. They've given yeah. me loads of opportunities. And yeah. at the start of my career, everyone was like, who on earth is this moron? <laughs> <laughs> why is she here? But, you know, I've... Um... And, you, and you started, you sort of cut your teeth on BBC Three, which is now right. bringing it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's coming back onto yeah. Yeah, Terrestrial, so I'm very I'm delighted for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, let's just have a look at the food a sec. Uh, we're nearly there, but how quick we work. <laughs> um, so, so these are the roasted veg. Uh, so I kept them quite chunky, so they look a bit kind of attractive on the plate rather than just a big pile of mush. Uh, this is my little bird. I'll just take these little wings off, actually. Um, just roasted in butter with the herbs in there. A little bit of green. I'll just put some watercress in there just for a little bit of garnish inside because uh, it just looks a bit more attractive. Uh, and then we've got uh, Theo's delicious uh, anchoard. Mm. Uh, to because uh, you know little roast chickens and that they're all they're all very nice but sometimes you need a little bit of a punch I think anchovy salty punch best, best thing <laughs> yeah isn't it oh god just I, a go I, I get anchovy on a dressing or in like an anchoard or well I love it absolutely love it I noticed you got quite a few in your book there's quite a few bits of anchovy in the cook. right so that's that's pretty much that um, I'll take this over so. Um, Okay. You're new, you got a new series? This is, this is my house. I know. <laughs> I, <feel like. laughs> I mean, you're literally you. doing all the TV. Thank you. I don't, well, do you know what it is? I wasn't really on the screen last year because I was... You know what it's like? You're making it and then it all comes out at once, so I can only apologise. Um, <laughs> I'll, be off, I'll be off air in a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. It's a really sort of daft, fun show, that. Um, so it's kind of... We have a house and we go into, you know... And there's a genuine homeowner and three imposters, and they're going around the place saying, oh, this is my house, and... And are you supposed to decide whose house it so is? So, I'm in the house doing the VTs, <laughs> and then there's a celeb panel right, that's right, where right. trying to figure out who's telling the truth. OK, and are there clues throughout? Yes. Is it a bit through the keyhole bit? But you know, I would liken like it to? to Would I Lie To You. I would okay. say it's sort ah. of goggle boxy yeah. a bit as well, though, because okay. you've got, like, we've got beautiful... Um, Panel, Judy right. Love, okay. Jamali, Emily, and Bill Bailey. Yeah. So they're all trying to suss it out. Yeah. Try, try, thank you. Try thank your you. tiny dinner. Yes. Uh, Ollie, what have we got here? We've got an Italian white wine to put a spring in your step, Matt. This is Little's Gavi 2019. It's six nice. pounds sixty-nine. The Cortese grape is what's going on here. A lot of people say to me, should I get Gavi di Gavi? Gavi di Gavi is just within the town. Gavi itself, DOCG, mm. is amazing for the minerally soils, the cool influence of the mountains, and the sunshine. And that's what Cortese needs to be full flavoured. It can produce wines that are a bit thin and acidic elsewhere, but in Gavi, £6.69, I mean, this is spring in a glass. It's and delicious with your baby chicken. Amazing good, value for money. It? How much was this? Six. £6.69. Six this is really good. Really incredible. I mean, that's, you, it's got yeah. such good length as well. I, I, I didn't Perfect. realize that. So it's a Garvey to Garvey, and then there's Garvey. Yes. So Garvey to Garvey is within the comp within the okay. town itself, and then Garvey is, is the place around it, and that's what you look for the D O C G, and then right. you get that lovely brightness, the honeydew melon character. Oh my word! This stuff takes you from spring to summer in one small step, Matt. I this, love it. This is this is. <laughs> delicious. I think with the chicken and anchovy, this would be amazing. Very delicious. How is that? How's your tiny roast? It's just fantastic, but I've just noticed that I'm the only person eating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all enjoy, enjoy it. it. Enjoy it. We're so all don't dribble. So no, no pressure. Don't talk no your mouth. If I was allowed, I would share. I Do you want that packaged up as well? Yes, please. Excellent. Yes. Can we make can we make that happen? That'd be good. <laughs> uh, that's all for us today on Saturday Kitchen Live. Uh, thanks to Theo, Vivek, Ollie, and of course Stacey. Thank you. All the recipes from the studio are on the website. You're welcome. BBC.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen, where you can also find all the details of how to enter <laughs> our special Saturday Kitchen kitchen prize draw. I've got more Best Bites for you tomorrow at 10am on BBC Two and I'll be back here live next week with Tom Booten, Sabrina Gare and Richard Curtis. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.